This will be a video on tuning the four corner shaker system. There are several programs for tuning shaker effects. I'll focus on SimHub, but the same principles apply to any of them. To start, there are three main principles when tuning. Less is more, frequency separation, car effects versus road effects. So in more detail, less is more, fewer effects equal clearer effects. Especially in the beginning, limit feedback to no more than three effects. You can always add more later. I don't, but that's subjective. And this is because the fewer effects you use, the more clearly each type of effect will come through. Too many effects and they can start to blend together. It's tempting to add more as the sim and the software offer all types of effects, but start small and build from there. Two, frequency separation, which gives both fuller and more realistic feedback by creating a unique frequency range for each effect, similar to bass, mid-range and treble with music. It also allows each effect to come through more clearly by preventing vibrations, amplifying or canceling each other out and creating standing waves. And three, car versus road effects. It's important to categorize effects as car generated or track generated and to include both. Car effects really bring your rig to life when the car starts, when it shifts, as it revs and they add a lot of immersion. Conversely, road effects really help you sense the track, especially the limits of the track uh, how it's impacting the handling and just a sense of being on that track. Both types of feedback add a lot and you don't want to limit it to just one or the other. So how do you put all that together to create a great tune? First, pick what you think are the three most important effects. Include both car and track effects. Second, set each effect with a unique frequency range. And third, test individually and then test combined. That last part is important as effects will feel different when used on their own or when combined with others. Using that criteria, let's create a tune. Just to start from the beginning, I'm going to add a new sim. Let's go to Bman G. I'll start with Road Rumble because it gives really clear rumble strip feedback and it's directional. So you'll feel it either on the left side or the right side as your tires run over the curb, which is great for track limits. The second effect I want is something that gives the sensation that the car is running or in motion, like an engine or road vibration. I found RPMs or engine vibration to be better than road texture. They're more consistent and you feel it as soon as the car fires up. I don't run RPM and engine vibration together as they conflict and I don't run either of those with road texture for the same reason. I find engine feedback is enough to make the rig feel alive so it narrows it down to RPM or engine vibration and either is good. The third effect I like is shifts. This is a great effect. It doesn't interfere with the other effects because it's so quick. For that reason, it's also good if you want to add more. I'll add one more and that's ABS traction loss effect. I don't use it because I've never felt vibration when tires lose grip on the cars I race in real life and that's what I'm trying to replicate, but I know that others like it and find it useful. Once I've got those loaded, I'll estimate what I think is a realistic frequency or what works best. I set road rumble in the 20s. I don't use base effect and high effect here because it just goes to the highest allowable frequency, which puts it in the range of other effects, and I don't feel this is realistic. I want to talk about road rumble a bit because I think it's such an important effect. Road rumble doesn't provide much feel on the smooth tarmac or the smooth curbs. It's the rumble strips on the curbs, which sounds limited, but those are really great because they define the limits of the track and have a big impact on handling. Uh, onto engine feedback is better higher up, so 60 hertz, and if you want to use high effect frequency, I'll put it to 80. On the left, there's uh, the response filter. I'm not sure why this is the default curve, but it looks inky, so I just right click to remove the nodes and create a linear response. Make sure it's up a bit on the left so you get vibration at idle. Shifts are good around 40 or 50, so this doesn't need changing. You can add high priority because it's such a short-lived effect. For traction loss, I'd look for a gap in the other effects. I'd rather have it high up than low, as traction loss usually happens around the curves, and you don't want to confuse it with the rumble strips. So I'll set it between shifts and engine feedback, let's say 55 hertz, and we're good. Just remember that's from someone who doesn't use that effect, so if you do, you can make a suggestion below. Then I adjust volumes. I generally have RPMs uh, mid-range. It's balanced between feeling it enough while not overpowering the temporary effects, such as uh, road rumble or shifts. I set the gear shift somewhere around 50, depending on the car and the sim. You want a good thunk, but it's in the strong range of the transducer, so it doesn't need to be set as high. 
and I set road rumble quite high. It's not in the strongest range of the transducer, given that the, it's in the lower frequency range, and you want to feel it over the engine revs. If you're not feeling it enough, you can set priority on. The one caveat is that it will cut out the other effects while it's active. That's okay with a quick effect like ships, but road rumble is longer, and so you'll notice it more. An alternative is to reduce the volume of the RPMs and increase the volume of the road rumble. I'll set up the master volume to 100%. This allows the signal to go through unthrottled, meaning that your amp has less work to do. From there, I'll fire up the sim. I use iRacing initially as I can hop in and out of VR and adjust the tune while the sim is running. Initially, I try one effect at a time, and I still do that if I'm adding an effect, but these days I'm usually just fine tuning the volume and the frequency. Tunes are highly subjective, so experiment. If you have one you like, send it to me and I'll post it at the bottom of the instructions page on the website so others can try it. I'd like that to be a place where people can share their tunes as a community resource for everyone. So those are my basic principles for tuning. If there's something you'd like me to cover in more detail, just let me know and I'll see what I can do. Thanks very much.